I used to work at a video store in Los Angeles in the 90s. We had quite a few celebrity customers, even a few porn stars too. It was a wacky work environment that could feel pretty unsafe at times, but that unpredictability was half of the allure. I honestly loved the job and the crazy unhinged customers that came with it. There was a porn star that would come in frequently, I'll call her T, whose visits I would absolutely dread. She only seemed to come in when I was working alone. She would always ask me the same question. Which of my movies do you carry? Now, she didn't ask this in any kind of unreasonable manner. T was a little older, clearly had a whole career behind her. She looked and acted a little crazy, like she was out of her mind, but she was also very obviously high. She'd come in jawing, grinding her teeth together, and her eyes would bulge out of her head like they were some prosthetic special effect. She was skinny from years of substance abuse, probably various personal issues with weight and image. T also reeked of booze and cigarettes most of the time. She would scream, which of my movies do you carry? Over and over again with that crackhead energy. I repeatedly told her over and over, our computer system would only look up movies by title, not by actors or actresses. But this fact never seemed to get through to her. Every time she would start screaming at me. Remember this is 1995, so the computer I used to look up things and check rentals was a dinosaur. But it didn't really matter because T would always forget. How in the hell can you find out which of my movies you have then? She would scream. I offered to walk her back to the adult section. She could see the stock shelves for herself. But she would always scoff, as if totally disgusted at that idea. This is where it gets bewildering, because she's a porn star who's already come into the adult film store. I'm not going in there, she yells. Lady, you're already in here. What's it going to hurt to go scan the shelves real quick? In my head, I'm thinking she's a porn star and she won't walk the aisles and look at the covers. It made me think she was even crazier than she was leading on. What'd she think she'd find in there? Just how out of touch with reality was this woman? Anyway, she would yell at me for a bit before calming down and then leaving. But this scene played out at least a dozen times. She wasn't the worst customer I had, but she came to be the one that I dreaded the most. But then one week, she didn't show up. Monday, Tuesday, the whole week went by and still, no tea. It was a huge relief, but part of me wondered, did something bad happen to her? Was she getting extra spun out and would come in even more crazy? The reasonable side of me figured that she'd OD'd. When another week went by without her presence, she left my mind entirely. Fast forward a month or so, guess who comes slithering through the double doors? It's T, and she looks like hell. First off, she clearly hasn't showered for several weeks, maybe since the last time that I saw her. You could always tell when she was really unwashed because her hair would just get more and more vertical. I don't know how else to explain it, other than the grease would just hold up this overly dyed frazzled hair. Her clothes are about the same as always, nightwear and half sporty valley mom. All of this is nothing when I see her face though. She has a huge black eye and her eyes themselves are just completely insane. She's got pupils like dinner plates, and the outer rim, instead of white, is tinged with a deep yellow. I can't tell if she's sick or more hungover than any human I've ever seen. She comes to the counter and sparks up that same shtick she always does. What movies do you have? Where are they? How many copies? I try to be a little personable and say, hey T, it's been a while since I've seen you. We still don't have an updated system that allows me to search for those specifics. I can show you the shelves that might help you though. I'll never forget the look she gave me. Just this faraway nod, half smile with her mouth all jittery. She asked me if I was sure, to which I said yes. Then she started backing up towards the exit. Unsure of what was going on, I figured she was in the middle of an episode and would see herself out, probably disappear for another few weeks. I would heard of mentally ill people being stuck in loops of behavior. Maybe visiting the video store was part of her loop. Boy, how wrong was I though? The door opens not 30 seconds later, and a big, tall, sharp-dressed guy strolls in. I extend a welcome, but hesitate. This guy looks pissed. He's storming right up to the counter. I ask if there's anything I can help him with. He sets his hands on the countertop, and they are blinding, 
studded with all kinds of gold and silver, crusted diamonds in between them. He calmly explains that I'm the problem, and that he's here as a solution. Huh? I start to come back with something about how I'm just at work, just an employee here. If he wants the cash in the register or the pornos in the back, he can have them. The guy laughs at me, shakes his head, then explains that I've just upset his friend who was just in here. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. T, the crazy cracked out porn star who's been pestering me for months, somehow secured backup? I tell him that I don't know her at all. She's just a needy customer who wants to find her films. There's not an easy way for me to do that, so she'll just have to look over the titles herself. This guy cuts me off with a wave of his hand. Says he knows. He's heard every word. He's heard it so many times that he feels like it's happening to him. And now he needs to get involved. It turns out he was pretty much what I pegged her for. This guy was clearly gang or drug related. Maybe even a kingpin. He acted like he was T's handler. Almost like a pimp or something. She was so old there was no way he had her tricking. I mean, I guess there's a market for anything. But I got more of the vibe that he had a relationship with her and for himself. Whatever the case, it's now my problem. I'm looking up at this coke machine of a man, deciding if I should hit the security button. This is just a video store, so part of me didn't even think that would work, but, but it was down at the other end of the counter, and if I moved, this guy was going to snatch me up for sure. He states T's full name, then her stage name. They were similar, probably more similar than you'd want them to be. I realized then that T was probably pretty easy to look up in the phone book if you were clever enough. He then asked me which movies do you have with her in them. Obviously, he didn't want the same excuses I'd given before, so I threw my hands up in defeat. I logged into the computer beside me, pulled up the inventory list of the entire store, started doing it the old-fashioned way. I jotted down a short list of titles that I recognized and just started from there. It took me almost an hour to find every single tape, constantly double-checking the shelves and discount racks for hidden copies. The whole time, that guy just casually followed me around, not saying a word, just watching me gather them all up in a tub on the counter. He'd crack his knuckles, roll his neck, textbook intimidation stuff. It was like a scene from The Goodfellas. It was only after I started to pile up all the tapes that I realized just how extensive T's career was. She was a mainstream actress for like 20 years from what I could tell and had been produced by some of the bigger studios throughout the decades. It occurred to me that this crackhead burnout probably still received checks for some of this stuff. Now the guy behind me made sense. As I said I did it, that was it. I told him it'd take me a minute to ring them all out. He asked what I meant by that. I set a charge for all the films. I explained I couldn't just let 80 or 90 tapes just disappear from our store. The guy picks up the bin of movies with one arm. Slides a pistol out of his waistband with the other. Looks me up and down. Sets the barrel on the counter. Then asks me if we're good. I just nod. And with a sigh, tell him to take care. I called my boss after I saw them leave the parking lot. Who in turn told me to call the police. Both of them showed up 20 minutes later. The police took a statement. And my boss filed a report of robbery. Then fired me right there on the spot. I've thought a lot about that guy, who he was, and why they wanted those movies. I work in retail, and there are only five of us that work in the store, including our manager. We are a very, very tight-knit family, so we naturally have each other's backs for anything and everything. Tonight, my coworker and I were minding the store, and he needed to leave early for a dinner reservation with some friends that just got to town, so I covered the last 30 minutes alone. We work in an area that has a prominent homeless population, most of whom are wonderful people. After he left, within a few minutes, a very sketchy character came in that set my hair on end. This guy was about six and a half feet tall, heavier set, and was generally intimidating. To add to the already scary vibe, he was holding a big gulp and a golf club, nothing else on his person. I'm a shorter, smaller female, so now I'm just on edge. He didn't hesitate to make conversation with me, 
and it's my job to be friendly and make sales, so I jumped in, hoping I'd learn he was harmless and coming back from a driving range or something, even though there's no golf courses within 20 miles of our workplace. Obviously, since you're reading this, I was terribly wrong. This man still had a hospital bracelet on from his two-month-long stay in a mental hospital, was very, very interested in me and every aspect of my life. He asked what I was studying, which was psychiatry, and then he was immediately put off, as he'd had a very bad experience. And I mean literally the moment he heard the word, it's like an alarm went off in his head. His whole expression changed completely. My heart does go out to people in this position who are clearly struggling, and it's my life's mission to help people like him. But no matter how much my heart went out to him, I was still very vulnerable. He then asked me the following questions. What's your name? Where do you live? Where do you go to school? When do you work? How often do you work? When is your next break? How old are you? Do you live alone? Is anyone else here? I lied to every single question, and when he demanded my phone number, I gave him the store phone number. I also told him my name was my manager's name, so that if he tried to make contact, he would be directed to someone that is not me. Thankfully, I was able to boot him out at close. Some of my answers were pretty vague, like where I lived, and that seemed to upset him a bit. Still, he left without much issue. When I left, I had changed my clothes and my hair to be a little less recognizable, and thank goodness that I did that, because he was waiting in the alley out back. I did my best not to notice and make it obvious, but I beelined for my car, which was in a parking lot across the street. This, unfortunately, gave him a bit of time, and he soon came wandering out of that alley. I didn't turn around. I just played it cool and stared at the crosswalk icon glowing across the street. It changed, and I proceeded, just as I heard this guy sprinting up behind me. It's late. There's no one else around. I know what's about to happen. He's going to hit me in the head or in the knee or whatever and then drag me into that alley. My nerves break and I finally turn back. He was standing at the edge of the sidewalk just staring at me. Once I turn, he can see my face. He grumbles something and then keeps following. Shit, I gave myself up now. Now he knows it's me. He even starts hollering the fake name that I gave him. I didn't respond. Just picked up the pace and hustled to my car. I figured as long as I could get inside, I could probably get myself out of here. Still, I hear his shoes scuffling the asphalt, gaining on me. When I think he must literally be right behind me, I want to turn around and look, but instead, I just break into a full-on sprint. I can hear his steps stop a little and then hesitate. My outburst to get away must have caught him off guard. Just as I reach the door inside the key in, I turn back one last time. I don't see the man, but his hand. Fingers wrapped around the handle of the golf club. It's so close that I can read some of the print on the hospital band that's hanging from his wrist. I was so terrified and reeling with shock that my knees buckled. My legs totally gave out from underneath me. As they did, the golf club went whistling overhead. It was all that that prevented me from getting my brains bashed in. Not instincts, not training, just sheer terror. Fortunately, I fell backward, right into the driver's seat of my car. I yanked the door closed, locked it, and sped out of there like I stole the damn thing. I called the police and then my manager. The guy was picked up and booked that night. I even had to identify him at the station. Always, always trust your gut out there, people. I work in retail. Receiving shipments for our location is one of the things that I do for my job, since I do the paperwork for it. I have to interact with the truck drivers who also bring the shipments in. It's a task-driven job and requires a lot of organization, but also demands a pleasant personality because of all the interaction time with the drivers. Most of them are older men in their 40s to 60. I'm a woman in her mid-20s. This is relevant. Most of the drivers are great, helpful, and professional. But there was this one who was oddly talkative all the time. Nothing really weird, but sometimes irrelevant or mildly inappropriate conversation topics, like stuff he did back in college, his ex-girlfriends, 
You get the picture. I just figured he was outgoing and a bit quirky, so I was friendly with him, like I am to everyone. Until a coworker, a guy who also works in receiving, but in a different apartment, told me that he only ever hears this driver talking to or about me. Apparently when I'm not in the room or in earshot, then he's silent or talking about me, asking where I am. Then a completely different coworker said he overheard this guy referring to me as his wife when I wasn't there. So after hearing all this weird shit, I become less bubbly around him, kept the conversation strictly to business. If he ever said anything about his personal life, I would just ignore it and then went about filing the paperwork. I wasn't rude to him or disrespectful, just simply stopped going out of my way to engage him in conversation. There was one time he got a little too friendly in the clerk's office, and my reaction was pretty knee-jerk. I couldn't help myself. I felt cornered because he was really laying in on the lovey-dovey stuff, right in front of other people. It was the strangest, most direct form of gaslighting I've ever seen. As if I just slide right up underneath him, like we'd been dating for years. He made a comment, and I spun around and told him, and the innocent bystander clerk, that we were in no way involved, and our communication would be strictly professional from there on out. That was when he turned on me. Everything he said was an attack on my personality. They must be working you too hard. You're far less fun to be around than you used to. You used to be a happy person. I love my job. I'm very happy here. I just don't like being creeped on by old men. Eventually, he went as far to telling other people that I was unprofessional, basically a bitch, just straight up gossiping about me behind my back. And that was when I confided in my boss about how uncomfortable this guy was really making me. I actually pride myself on my outgoing nature. I'm bubbly by default. And the fact that he was causing me to have to change my personality around him and then telling others that I was cold hearted simply just for keeping my distance. That was the line I drew. My boss filed a report. Everything died down after that, at least for a little while. My coworkers would still overhear something every now and again, but, but it seemed this old timer was keen to who was on my side. I figured it was water under the bridge at that point and we just let bygones be bygones. That was until the phone calls. Every day for three or four weeks, my phone would start blowing up at random times throughout the day at work, at home, and even in the middle of the night. I thought it was spam, but no one ever said anything. The number came up as unknown, so I didn't even know how to block them. Part of me had a suspicion that it had something to do with that old guy. During some of his good old day stories, he'd mistakenly cop to doing stuff exactly like this. Prank phone calls, leaving stuff on people's porches and cars, whatever. He got a kick out of messing with people he deemed to have wronged him. I started keeping tabs at work asking my friends in other departments to keep their ears open for anything, especially anything the old guy thought was funny. I keyed them into my situation and that if he talked to anyone about what he was doing, it'd be in a braggadocious way and to be proud about it. Nothing came through the grapevine though, but every day my phone continued to ring. Some days, especially if I was at work, I just turned it off, dump it into my purse to get a little peace of mind. The more I thought about it, the more it made sense. Of course this sour old man had the time to mess with me. He drove a truck for a living. He was probably on the phone 18 hours a day. With renewed confidence, I let the calls roll off my back. I'd answer them and call the guy by name, tell him what I thought about him, then hang up. Even at work, I'd look him right in the eye, shake my phone at him like we were long lost pen pals. I could see it was getting underneath his skin. One night on the weekend, I woke up to my phone light. It wasn't buzzing, just the constant on and off screen. It was enough to get me. It's an unknown caller. I roll over and answer it. As I get ready to let out a string of vulgarity fly out of my mouth, I hear a loud honk outside my house. And I can also hear it through the phone. Now I'm legitimately creeped out. I get up and peek through the curtains to see this guy's truck in the middle of the street. The same truck he used for work. He hung up on me the second he saw the curtains part then roared off into the dark. No more honks, no turnaround. I didn't know what to think. First my phone and now my house. How the hell did he learn any of this information? I didn't go to sleep that night, but started putting together as many puzzle pieces as I could. By the end of the weekend, I had constructed a pretty solid case against this asshole. I took it straight to my boss on Monday morning. 
I gather that he must have been stealing my personal information from the files at work. This was the second time I was in his office about this particular guy, so I had already created a paper trail. When I brought the new stuff against this clown, my boss was floored. He couldn't believe it. He went on to file a second report, but this time he made a direct announcement to the entire company and other companies that we were working with. It was the start of a chain that exposed a lot of scummy weirdos harassing the office girls. This happened about one year ago. I'm a 20 year old female and I'd gotten a new retail job at a clothing store. It was my first week and I had went through training with my coworkers on how to work the sales floor in the register. It was a fairly busy night and I was placed in the home slash accessory department. I was halfway through my department when I had spotted a weird man looking at me. He then says to me, Hey, can I ask you a question? And I thought he was going to ask me about a store item. Well, I was wrong. He then asked me in a condescending tone while laughing. <laughs> well, are you even old enough to be working here? I didn't know they hired 13 to 14 year olds. I looked at him awkwardly and then responded back with, Yes, sir, I'm old enough to be working here. I knew that he wanted to know my age by the tone of his voice. Then he looks at my name tag. I'll be using a fake name for privacy reasons, but my name is pretty unique. But then he says, Faith? Is that even a real name? I just laugh awkwardly and say yes that it is, and just continue working in my department. I get to where the pillow department is, and as I'm fixing the pillows, He's yet again behind me and then says, Oh, what do you know? It's you again. And he then grabs a pillow fluffing it and then asks, Are there any pillows here that are bigger? You see, I have a big bed and a big house and these pillows are just way too small for me. I just looked at him kind of awkwardly not knowing what to say and tell him, Well, this is all we have, sir. I'm really sorry if it's not to your liking. As I'm getting towards the end of my department, I get called up to cover my coworker's register, and when I call up the next customer, it's the creep again. He's just looking at me up and down, and I'm ringing up his items as quickly as possible, trying not to talk to him. He then says to me in a creepy tone, You know, I'm a smell kind of guy. I like smells. And no joke, he makes a loud sniffing sound in the process, then says, Mmm, you smell so damn good right now. I just looked at him in shock, not knowing how to handle this weird situation. I just told him thank you and to have a good night, and that I have other customers waiting. He flashed me a creepy smile, then telling me, I'll be seeing you again very soon. That's about all that happened, and luckily I didn't see him again. But damn, what a creepy ass guy and experience. Even thinking about it gives me the shivers.